This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're down at the Copper Box today. A couple of days ago until the Olympic qualifying event ahead of Tokyo 2020. With me, Team GB hopeful Rosie Eccles. Rosie, first and foremost, before we get out of boxing talk, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? You good? Very good. We're just talking off camera about this media stuff you all have to do today and the obligations. You find it's just getting easier with time, all this stuff you're having to deal with? Yeah, it becomes process after a while. Like, you know, we never like hearing our voices back. I think I've always struggled with that, but no, it's okay. It's just all part and parcel now. Now, looking around today, all these all these world-class athletes we've got around us, some are in more jovial spirits, you seem in quite a good mood, some are a bit more business-like. What is the mood like in camp in general, though, at the minute? Can you sum it up? Yeah, mood's good. I think energy's high, everyone's looking forward to it. Like, for me now, this is the day, you know, I just chill out, relax. Um, you know, like, if you smile, everything's, you know, everything's a bit easy, you know, it's not all kicked off yet. But, no, everyone's feeling good, everyone's looking good. So that gives a good buzz, good buzz in camp. In terms of your form going into this, I believe I'm right in saying you medalled at the Europeans last year. Do you feel in a rich vein of form? Do you feel good going into this? Yeah, so we just had come off um, multi-nation camp. So I've been sparring some, you know, the top girls in my way and I felt really good actually last week. You know, sometimes you think, oh, I don't feel good yet, don't feel good yet. But like the last few weeks, it's just been coming and every day I felt better and better. And, you know, when we're sparring top class people while training two or three times a day. So, you know, when you get there and do three, three minute rounds, off, you know, a nice few days rest, you know, be feeling lovely then. You mentioned you've been doing all that world class sparring, but in the last sort of week or so, as you come towards this, this final hurdle, what, what does it entail for you? Is it about relaxing? Is it about mental preparation? What is it for you? Yeah, for me, mental prep's massive. Um, I run for a lot of stuff in my head, like more to do with me, how I want to feel, but also like then physically, it's like feeling sharp. For me, I can tend to do too much, so I try now to like just take that rest and then a few sharp bits on the pads. Um, we had like a little tech spa earlier in the week just to keep our eye in. Um, it's just now whatever makes you feel good. You know, everyone's different. We all want to do different things. So it's just make the way and feel good doing it. Now I read somewhere that it was always your childhood dream to go at the Olympics. You didn't know what sport it would be in, but no. do you think childhood Rosie Eccles would believe that you were one last step away from going to the Olympics as a professional boxer? Do you know what's so funny you asked me that? Because when I got the call off Rob, um, obviously saying that I was selected, it was the first time it really hit me and it kind of went back like this is, you know, the closest. I also felt, like, it almost felt a bit emotional because I was like, you know, I'm the closest I've ever been to that dream and it kind of made me think back to, the, you know, that kid at first, you know, when I wanted to be everything in the Olympics. And then, obviously, when boxing became the dream at sort of 15, 16, um, and it was quite a special feeling. Um, in a way, actually, that normally I put a lot of pressure on myself going into events. And, of course, there's that pressure, but to be honest, I know I could, if I go out and perform, I know I can do it. I know it's achievable. So a lot of people freak out at this point and think, oh, my God, and maybe I thought I would. But actually, it's like, no, nah, this is what, what I've trained for. I've worked so hard to get to this point. It's just go and grab it. Now, it hasn't been an easy journey for you by any means either. I read that in preparation for tournaments before you went full-time with GB, you were working 12-hour shifts at various jobs. Talk to me about that journey to, to where we are now. Yeah, so obviously, you know, from young, you know, when I moved out at 18, I've always, you know, tried my best to work and pull my own weight. And I was studying full-time um, for the last five years. And then, obviously, I work in two, three jobs at a time as well just because well to be able to box really um so when i was with wales i tr trained full time there like in the gb set but wales don't have the same funding levels so um i'd obviously train three or four times a day in wales then i'd go out um and work afterwards and work long weekends as well like four days like from when we finished camp on thursday um while still training and it was it was hard because even when i started gb i was still finished off my masters i had to see up my my work contract um, and it was hard, but I've often said, like, when you guys, like, you interview me, I think it makes you so much more appreciative. And, like, actually now, I think I benefit from how I feel now because I've been in that, I've had to adapt in those other situations. Like, now it's great. It should be easy now, you know. I was going to ask you that. Do you think going through those situations to where you are now, where you're full-time Team GB athlete on the verge of the Olympics, do you think back then when, when you were sort of doing it for the love of it, that, that sort of humbled you in a way going to where you are now? Oh, massively humbled me, and it gives you that grit and that sense of resilience. And I've never, I, you know, I, I would never want to have been. But I've never been handed anything in boxing. You know, I've really grafted from the start. You know, I started a bit late. You know, I've really worked. Um, I feel like I have earned my place everywhere I've got. I've never been handed an opportunity. Um, you know, even when I started on GB, you know, I was coming in, you know, not the favourite to be going into this, and I had to graft my way up. You know, and and hopefully now that all all pays off. I think it gives you a different level of resilience and grit. Um, going into these qualifiers. 
Now, Rosie, we are here at the Copper Box where the qualifiers will be taking place over the course of the next couple of weeks. If you can, can, you just tell me a bit about the response when it was confirmed you were selected and that friends and family were going to be able to come down and give you that final push as well. Yeah, that's super special. As you know, we travel the breadth of the world, like, you know, um, competing, and often you can't get that support. You know, it was 2016 in the British, you know, on the British Championship that I um, last, you know, boxed in the country, you know, so that's, it's super special. I've got my family who have been supportive, and my friends actually are all, like, looking to buy tickets and come, and, and that's super special. Like, I, I've always said, like, I think Olympic Games, it's super special because it's not just about you, it's about everyone who's got you there. It's about sharing it with everyone. Like, my nephews and nieces, I've got seven of them, and it's about I want to inspire them and give them some memories of their childhood that, you know, and they could think, oh, God, I could go out and do it, so I could do anything that's, that's similar. And it's just so much more special. Now, in terms of beyond the Olympics, it's a great time for women's boxing, amateur and professional at the minute, particularly in the professional ranks. You know, we've got two female fights headlining on Sky Sports in a yeah. few weeks. Yeah. Is it on your mind to maybe go professional? You mentioned there you want to be a role model for, yeah. for your nieces and nephews, maybe others as well. Where does your future lie with regards to that? That's an interesting one, really, because a lot of people ask me and a lot of competition have it, but my style suits pro style. You know, I'm a bit of a puncher, I'm a pressure fighter, um, you know, I'm a box fighter. But I don't think I'm done with the amateurs yet. You know, I think we'll see see where things go. You know, I, I feel, you know, I haven't got my world medal yet, you know, and, you know, I would love to become world champion. And the, it's great. Those girls are giving us a, a platform because, obviously, amateur doesn't get the same recognition until the Olympics as professional. But at the moment, there's so much talent in the amateurs. It is feeding into the pros. Um, but for now, I think my development in the amateurs is I'm going to become a better fighter. We have more hard fights. You know, I don't want to be um, dropping down at first to then to then go up and feel stuck. I think I think it's really important that all the talent then moves into the pros. But I think you've got to do what you want to do in the amateurs first. And then move I'd love to finish um, as a professional fighter um, and, and become world champion there. But I, I don't know if my gloves are hung up in the amateurs just yet. I want to ask you, Rosie, you mentioned that sort of pressure fighter style you have. Where did that come from, that, that sort of style? It's not traditional amateur style per yeah. se. Where did that start? I have no idea. I think it suits. It just suits my mentality. You know, I've or you know, in training, I'm known for doing too much, or you know, that bit more, and you know, and I've got that bit of punch as well. I just, I love to fight. You know, but now I'm a box fighter. You know, I do box as well. Um, you know, I use my jab lock, but I love the idea of you know wearing someone down in the ring. You know, getting to them, and obviously that's a very hard style in the amateurs. You know, people want to hit and run, and, and you know, get those opponents. But it's it's using my style to sort of adapt to theirs. But you've only got three rounds, so you've got to make sure you hone your skills and get blooming good at doing it. And obviously, um, back in Wales for a few years, Colin Jones been my coach, and he was very much a pressure fighter. So that obviously has helped my game and the coaches here have like everyone feeds in and tries to strengthen you at what you do best and also um, help you help your negative aspects as well but um, I couldn't I you know I can do a bit of everything else but that's my style and and it seems to work for me. Rosie there's a lot of media here today to talk to a lot of different people including yourself so I'll leave the final word to you for everyone supporting you and for everyone sending you nice messages as you go towards that final push for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics what would you say to them? Oh, I just want to say a massive thank you and almost sorry if I don't get back to everyone because there's so many of you that like um, are wishing me well and coming to support me but I definitely when I get that qualification I'll be thanking you all and um, yeah just thank you so much for your support. Well Rosie good luck and thank you very much for your thank time you. thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Thank you.